But let me real quickly take you to your Bibles. And first of all, I share with you in the book of Hebrews the truth of the sacrifice of Christ. And for those of you that weren't with us, the book of Hebrews, starting in chapter 9, is a crucial book for you to understand. And I share with you from the depths of my heart that the most important truth for you to know is not what some church affirms or what some church has always believed, but what the Bible says. Because no church is going to stand with you before the judgment seat of Christ. No church is going to stand with you when you come into the afterlife, into the eternal realm of God. No church will be there. No building, no clergy, no no order of anybody's will be there. It will just be you and your life, whether or not it was in obedience or disobedience to God's word. Not to some church. Not to Quidnesset and not to saying anything, but to the word of God. Look at the Word of God starting in chapter 9, because chapter 9 really shows clearly of the book of Hebrews what has happened to the Roman church. And what we find in the Roman church is that they have taken the once and for all sacrifice of Christ and they have made it to be an ongoing, ever repeated. Starting in verse 12, it says, And not through the blood of goats and calves, but through his own blood, he entered the holy place. What are the next three words? Once for all. That's why there's so many hymns that emphasize that within the the body of hymns of the faith. Once for all, O blessed Redeemer. Once for all, Christ died for me. Not twice. Not four times. Not 200,000 times a day. That's how many times the Mass is performed in Roman churches around the world. But once Jesus Christ died. And look what that 12th verse says, having obtained eternal redemption. Okay, continuing on down to verse 22. And according to the law, one may almost say all things are cleansed with blood. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness. Therefore, it was necessary for the copies of things in the heavens to be cleansed themselves, but the heavenly things with better sacrifices. For Christ did not enter a holy place made with hands, a mere copy but into the heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor that he should offer himself often. That's one of the most glaring errors of Romanism. The ongoing sacrifice of Christ. That's why it's very difficult for me to stand shoulder to shoulder in some ecumenical uh, stance against some current issue. Why? Because if I stand next to a Romanist, I am saying that we are both Christians. But I can't say that because the Bible says that a Christian believes, look at verse 26, that Jesus Christ, in the middle of the verse, but now once in the consummation of the ages, he has been manifest to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And inasmuch as it is appointed unto man once to die, and after this comes the judgment, so Christ also, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, shall appear a second time for salvation to those who eagerly await him. The ones who are going to be saved are the ones who believe in the once and for all sacrifice of Christ. Not those that believe they have to add to it and keep offering him over and over again. So that's what's wrong with the Mass. And I could share with you, and you can get the tape of last week, as we went through actually the Council of Trent and looked at all that the Council of Trent, which uh, was reaffirmed by Vatican II as being the position of the Roman Church as to the work of Christ. And they believe the work of Christ is ongoing, that the work of Christ is not finished, that it must be constantly, he must be offered over and over again. But secondly...